Welcome to Old Guy Tech. The OGT.TV recording studio. Technology for the rest of us. 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 Hi, and welcome to Old Guy Tech TV. I'm Rob Charney here today with Jonathan Charney and our, our two way round table, even though we're sitting in front of a square table, talk today uh, about uh, the internet and what's going on and uh, uh, some of the things that caught our attention uh, for today. And uh, we thought we'd share it with you. So, again, hopefully, you're enjoying these uh, these uh, vidcasts. We're, we're, we're just now getting into it, of course, and you know that, and we're trying to always make each show better at every opportunity. So thanks for hanging in there with us, and hopefully we can get some comments going, and we're still looking for our Skype buddy. So if you're watching any of these, make sure you get a hold of me and see if we can't uh, do something uh, in that vein. So we'll start with Jonathan. Okay, Jonathan, what do you got that you uh, caught your attention today? Uh, my first one was from the Associated Press. It was about the, the military computers that are controlling the drones. Uh, having a virus on it. Um, <clears throat> according to the AP, it says, uh, oh yeah, the, so what, what, basically according to the AP, it wasn't actually in the flight control computer, which I'm assuming is actually not connected to the internet or some sort of hopefully protected uh, intranet. Uh, basically it said it uh, was in the um, I'm sorry. It was in basically computers that did, uh, was in a secondary system that did, um, you know, ground control, you know, air conditioning, yeah. you know, stuff like that. Right, right. Um, according to it, though, according to what the, they said, it was actually from, it was a virus that was generally used for games like Mafia Wars, Farmville, you know, to uh, get virus, to, to get their passwords. So it was a keylogger? Uh, it's that's what it looks. That's what it reads like. I mean, it's not very specific. I guess uh, they don't, for some reason, want to name the the actual virus or malware that was into it. Um, but they specifically say all over their story that it was, you know, that it wasn't in main systems that actually controlled the the drones. The most interesting part of it, though, it was actually according to the story, it was they they got it from a portable hard drive slash uh, and a, like thumb drives. Mm. Um, according to the story, the the Pentagon's actually banned all portable hard drive devices because of. Yes, absolutely have. Uh, you can't. I don't know how they they bring it in. Obviously, it depends on their uh, security clearance. My little bit of time at the Pentagon, I'll tell you one thing. They they make sure that their uh, uh, internet connectivity is is just that. It's completely separated from any of their military. Uh, uh, networks and uh, it's pretty hard to get inside there so it obviously if that happened it was a board uh, uh, sergeant or second lieutenant or something and decided to play some games uh, well, well, what it sounded, in their intranet well, that what sounds it, very good what it sounded like is what it did is I guess it sounded like somebody brought it home or on their personal computer they were actually their personal work computer they were playing the game then brought it into it and connected to the computer. Yeah, I mean, that's what it, yeah. they make it sound like what happened. Yeah, well, it probably is what happened. I mean, you know, how else would it have gotten there? So somebody obviously broke the rules, and there's going to be some heads flying on that one. Or at least getting in trouble. I highly doubt they're going to chop off heads. Uh, figure of speech. I, I don't think they're going to chop off heads, but I think, uh, I think it brings home again the uh, even an innocent act uh, uh, the problems that can uh, occur for the military and their uh, their own intranet and their own uh, secure nets uh, of uh, people bringing things in. I mean, people will be people, and there's uh, an awful lot of stations and areas where you know the military works, and sometimes they're isolated and they have hours and hours of boredom, and so they think something as innocent as bringing in a game to play. In the meantime, well, no, this is a uh, Mafia Wars. It's actually it's a Zanga game. That you play off of Facebook or MySpace or one well, of those social still, networks. Like, well, it's still, they, you said uh, they had to plug something in, right? Well, that's. It, it sounded like it was on the computer, and and somehow it got to the jump drive. They they don't actually. They're not very specific on how it happened. I'm assuming because. Well, the military is not going to get it specific, but it's like saying you know you're a little bit pregnant. I mean, this is in this particular case, we know somebody brought something in. And yeah, so I'm assuming what happened, it was on the computer, somehow it got to on a file, or somehow it got to the jump drive, then they plugged it into another computer, that's what it, they make it sound like what happened. Well, my guess is you had a, a bored soldier there somewhere playing a game, and he brought it in, and obviously that's not a good thing. I'm glad to hear it didn't get into the actual drone software, but as uh, our military gets more and more uh, dependent on 
uh, connectivity, uh, I think we got, they're going to they're going to face some tough issues, and it's it's always going to be there. I don't see how they're going to get away with it without well, it being there. So I was gonna, I was going to say I actually do find it fascinating. And uh, was it uh, was, uh, World War One was was it nineteen eleven when it started? Well, the, yeah. World well, War I was I was thinking that because World War One was really the beginning, as far as I understand, of mechanized warfare, where they had tanks and stuff like that. And it's it's interesting. The beginning of this century is really the first one. Well, they're depending on a different kind of mechanization, a complete revolution in military hardware. Right. You know, and, and instead of having some guy actually in it, it's a, you know, remotely piloted thing. Okay. I, you know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, because... <laughs> well, there, there, yeah, there, there's no doubt that the, there's going to be more and more remote-controlled uh, devices. I mean, uh, you lose less people, and you're actually more effective, and you can go places that uh, you know, a, a man-controlled device can't go, so... Yeah, and according, yeah. To the, according to this place, it's in Creech, Nevada. I mean, so I'm assuming it's in the middle of nowhere. I mean, so they go from the middle of nowhere, flying to the middle of nowhere, so... Right. I mean, you're talking about where the controllers are, yeah. the flight controllers are. Yeah, which yeah. is more interesting. They actually give you where it's at. I mean, I'm surprised that's not, you know, need to know. Well, if they actually say where it's at, everybody already knows. I mean, it's they're, they're not going to give away information that most people don't know. I don't know. It, it, it could be like the world's worst kept secret, you know, Area 51. Right, right. Well, somehow. We still don't know what really about it and then and, and truly area 51 is a nickname i doubt seriously that the military calls it that and uh but uh we'll let them have their little secrets they need it we don't need to know everything trust me we don't want to so with that said um if you were microsoft what part of yahoo would you buy i'd, I'd buy Flickr. Flickr would definitely be one of the ones i would have or if i was google i would get Flickr. um yeah, Def definitely. I mean, if not for anything, just for the user base, um, even though it's a lost leader. So, but that's what well, I would buy. It's been almost three years now since they did the first initial. We're going to buy Yahoo, which just blew my mind because I didn't realize it's been that long. Um, and uh, now I can guarantee you the price is going to be considerably lower than it was three years yeah, they ago. They were going to play like thirty-three dollars a share. I right. mean, they could probably give you know ten dollars a share or even five. I mean, yeah. I mean, poor Yahoo is hemorrhaging in every way possible. Yeah. Is there really in um? It's the only other thing I think was it Yahoo Business. I think is another thing because I guess a lot of people go to it. I'm not really sure if there's anything Yahoo has anymore that's even worth grabbing at this point, just because there doesn't seem to be. Uh, I never go to Yahoo. I mean, so you're yeah, not yeah, see... I have to agree. I, ha I so rarely, you know, isn't it funny how we, we change? In the beginning, it was everything was Yahoo. And then uh, I haven't been to Yahoo myself personally, especially as a search engine in years. Well, know, they haven't, but... well, they've never really been a search engine. I mean, they, at, at first, I mean, they were, I guess, some sort of search engine, you know, besides the, 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 the links and stuff. But I mean, they used Google for a long time. And now since the Jerry Yang really goofed up their, their other deal, you know, with Microsoft. I mean, so they're using Bing now. Right. right. So, I mean, they're not even a true search engine. I mean, they're using somebody else's results. Right. Well, that's true. So, Flickr, I agree. I think Flickr is probably... I, I know I use it in my photo business quite a bit. I like Flickr. It works really well. Uh, Yahoo Business, I would separate by. But I don't really... I mean, there's a lot of this stuff there. But I honestly couldn't tell you which one to me, would seem like the one you would want to buy. I mean, I, I simply don't know. I well, mean, I, you know, it would be nice if we had somebody with a little more Yahoo knowledge than you and I on this. But So I'm just picking apart what, you know, if you could buy bits and pieces. And I agree with Flickr. I'd buy Yahoo Mail. Well, yeah, Mail and Messenger is another still completely uh, highly used service. I think, uh, uh, I think that makes sense. I think uh, Yahoo Mail and Mes Messenger... Uh, I, it certainly would be a great way for Microsoft to eliminate its competitor. Yeah, they get in trouble for that. I mean, I, I read somewhere this week that Novell's finally going after them for anti-competitive practices, like 15 years later. Well, Novell is so... F they're barely alive, is my understanding. I don't think they employ more than a dozen people anymore after it being such a big company, and they're just grasping at straws. So they're going to sue whomever they can. And Microsoft... Uh, is the elephant in the room, and so they're going to go after after them, of course. What about uh, Yahoo uh, Shopping uh, deals in Yahoo Travel? I don't use them. I mean, yeah, I don't either. Except that 
Now, Microsoft started Expedia, right? I'm not sure which one they started, yeah, I thought, truthfully. I thought it was that, but anyway. Uh, uh, so, uh, the thought is that uh, uh, shopping deals and travels uh, might be a, uh, a good offering for Bing. Uh, to they're, increase they're, Bing. Well, they already do something similar. I mean, they do something very similar. I mean, they do... They being you can they do their flights they have being deals or, or right. stuff like that so I would, I'm not even sure what the purpose of buying that would be un, unless you're just unless somehow Yahoo has some sort of deals with companies besides that I don't even see it being I, worth that I'm sure there's Yahoo uh, agreements and deals out there that Microsoft doesn't have and I think it would be a good good and, and that's even if the deals would be transferable to and you know, if they're not a short term deal I mean if you buy them now do they end up going in a couple of years it's not worth the price I don't. I don't know for certain, but I don't think that um, any of these companies, knowing that you may be bought or sold at any time, would go into a deal where you know if you're if you're sold to another company, your deal goes away. I, but the only problem it's Microsoft. I mean, it, it, you never know if somebody would just say, "Hey, we don't like them. We're you know have some sort of escape clause in the contract." Well, not being privy, I have no idea. You may be right. I have no idea. Well, what about Yahoo advertising? I could do. I would definitely see that if I was Bing. I mean, they don't have. Um, you know, they don't. I don't think they have near the reach that Google does on that. So I could totally see getting just the advertising part. Advertising part of that. Well, that was a tough word. I could totally see buying just that. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. rest of it. I mean, I'd, honestly, I you know let it die in the vine. I mean, there's not not much that I ever use of them. Yeah, I think. Um, I think the nail is in the coffin for Yahoo. I, I hate to say that, but unless somebody does step up to buy them, may it be uh, Microsoft or may it uh, be um, Google or whomever, uh, yeah, I, I think they're going to be broken up. I think at some point in time, Yahoo is not going to be. See, I don't Yahoo think they're going to be broken up. I just think everybody's just going to let them die in the vine. I don't see how they're even worth getting, well, I mean, even I, purchasing. I just think everybody's just going to let it suffer. No, I don't think so. I, I, my opinion is I think some of the, somebody's going to buy them, and they're going to buy bits and pieces of them. I don't think they're going to die in the vine. I think there's too much value there. We may not see it because as, as consumers, you don't see it as often, but as a, uh, an insider looking to add uh, content, like content to Bing, uh, I think Yahoo probably has some things that Bing doesn't have that it would be worth buying. Mm. And it is Microsoft. they got an awful lot of money. It's not yeah, but, like it's going to, you know, it's yeah, cheaper most, to buy the technology than then completely reinvent the wheel. But most of the stuff there is redundant to what they already have. So well, there's really no reason. Because Bing has everything Yahoo has as far as news, maps, images, flight search, you know, stuff like that. Well, my feeling is there must be something there in Yahoo if Yahoo still exists and people still use it a lot because it's it's still a heavily used uh, area for shopping and travel. Uh, and I forgot what the latest stats on it was, but I, I know reading uh, reading up on it, Yahoo still used quite a bit for that. So it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't cost Microsoft all that much just to buy up bits and pieces of it and add it to their their Bing plate, and I, I think it would add uh, add something to it. Yeah, I think it would be a mistake if they bought anything but the advertisement. Okay, well, so you and I agree to disagree on that one. I think there's value to Yahoo and Jonathan doesn't. All right, what's your next thing? Uh, the next one, you know, is, 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 is you know, is a gamer and, and music fan. You know, it's kind of a uh, no duh. Basically, it's saying that uh, ditching DRM could actually reduce piracy. I mean, I'm not really surprised by that. You know, basically by having, you know, doing what you want with the content you buy instead of having to buy a new copy every time you, you change some sort of format. You know, it, it's really, um, uh, you know, it says... You lost me. <laughs> so, so well, well DRM, DRM is digital rights management. Basically, right. they're saying if you have an MP3 and you bought it from iTunes or something, you can only play it like an Apple device. Okay. You can't play it anywhere else. You can't do anything else with it but play it on the Apple device. Right. Basically, what if you eliminate that DRM, you could put it anywhere you want. You could play it with a Microsoft desi uh, device, uh, iRiver, or whatever. Yeah. And um, like same thing with DVDs, because I think under the the DMCA, the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, I think even backing up your own movies for your own personal co uh, your own personal copy, I think is even still against the law. Hmm. You know. So basically, I mean, what it does, I mean, it's it's just like you know, gun laws. It it really just hurts honest people right right I and mean, it says later in the um let's see where is it yeah you know like i said it says uh, according in the article it says uh, united quote many consumers uh, 
choose to pirate music and movies because doing things like backing up media collections is difficult with DRM content. You know, basically, it makes it nearly impossible without buying tools that let you do it, even though those tools are probably still illegal to buy. Okay. Like software, you know, like like back in the day when the DVD encryption key first got broken. Right. You know, I'm pretty sure that was illegal, you know, up until they realized, you know, you can't really stop people from doing that. So the whole idea behind, let's say, music and DRM, you buy something from iTunes. The reality is all you're doing is renting that tune. You don't actually own it. Well, basically, you're paying 99 cents to... Well, you don't technically own anything. You don't own music. It's technically a license. Right. So you're not really even renting it. You're just licensed to have it. So I guess... Licensed to listen to it. So under that, you just basically say you're only licensed to listen to it on that device. That's it. Right. You know, but, you know, there's also fair use, which says I bought the content. I want to be able to back it up, you know, because I lost... I I bought a lot of... Not a lot of stuff, but I bought in stuff and have uh, iTunes goof up and completely lose it and had to repurchase it. Just because iTunes, you know, for some reason decided, you know, not to let me back anything up. Okay, so that brings up a good question. Has that happened to many of you out there? Where, where you, you've bought something from iTunes and it's disappeared and you had to buy it again? I've never had that experience, so well, I don't know. It's a lot better than it used to. I mean, now now they, you know, now you could burn the disc. I don't know if I never knew about that feature at the time that happened or or if I just didn't do it, but... But now they let you back everything up. I mean, they'll even in the the Apple the App Store for the iPhone and iPad, they they have little things that when you when you go past the app, it says installed or it has a history of the applications you bought, so you can actually re-download them instead of being you right. know stuck in nowhere. And you know, because if your uh, you know if your iTunes thing goofs up, you lose the, you know lose that. The only thing is, it does is if your apps. There, there's certain apps that get pulled from the store, and if you use it and that app and something happens, you still lose that app that you can't re-download it because Apple pulled it. Yeah, gotcha. I mean, if it's not there, it's not there. You can't. Exactly. So that brings up the question, how often does Apple pull content? Well, anything has to, every, everything that's in the iTunes store goes through them. I mean, everything. I mean, so anything that's submitted, it's checked somehow. But you still see stuff like the iHandy flashlight that get passed away a year ago or so. Right. Basically, it was a a flashlight with multiple colors and you entered in a certain pattern or it would turn purple and it would turn your your, your iPhone into a wireless hotspot, Uh which is against the the iPhone. Right. The the EULA on the App Store. Right, right. Okay. Or uh, like sexually explicit stuff. uh, You can't do that. There's a number of things you can't do. Like I, th- I don't think you can duplicate functionality or just stuff they don't want you to do, like uh, turning the phone into a wireless hotspot for free. Well, okay. And, and one of our goals here in these shows is that hopefully we'll be on iTunes at some point in time, and we're still looking at that as well. Assuming, of course, you want to listen to our content while you're driving down the road or you're looking at your iPad, but we're hoping you want to. Um, but we don't know. I haven't gone. Th- we haven't gone through the experience yet. So we're we're again we're just starting. So we'll we'll see what happens with that. So DRM gets a thumbs down. I've hated DRM since I first found out what it was. Matter of fact, I hated it on the VHS tapes. They wouldn't allow you to copy back in the day. Right. Right. You know when you, they'd have these whole funky devices. You could you know you'd find in some back alley behind a video store that allowed you to de undo whatever they did to those VHS tapes. Right. Right. Well, if if there's something that's locked up, there's always somebody out there who's going to figure out how to break it. It's just the nature of the beast. It's what we do. Well, I mean, I, I mean, not to add to the conversation, but I still think it's fair use. If I own it, I want to be able to have it in other media. You know, like if I have a DVD, I'd want to be able to watch it on my computer and not have the disc on it every time. Well, it's like you just said, you don't own it. Yeah, but I still think you know I'm a pri- I still think there's a little bit of fair use. I mean, basically, that's saying if you bought a movie on DVD and there's no DVD players and you weren't allowed to burn a copy, you'd have to buy another copy. Or you know, it just it just seems like you know basically they want more money. They want you to buy a copy for you know like like it could be like you know if you bought a copy on one phone and you switched phones, they want you to buy another copy for the same phone. You know, so it can get ridiculous. Yes, I can see that. It doesn't seem. It seems like once you pay your licensing fee. You should be able to transfer it to whichever device that you want to view it or hear it on. Yeah. what you're saying here. Or, or, or simply if you have little kids that like, you know, teething on DVDs or, or whatnot, you know, you should be able to make a backup copy. So 
if you know your kid, cat, or whatever destroys it, you should be able to at least be able to have a copy of something you've already purchased. Okay, well that's reasonable, but you're saying that can't be done now. It's I don't think it's legal. I'm pretty sure the DMCA says you can't do that. You know, but there is fair use and people still do it. You know, so it's, I think it's one of those things. If you know, I, I don't think they'll go after you and me, but if you're you know some guy who ends up selling this copy, then I could see him going after you. Okay. Interesting so, enough. So what's your story? Uh, my next one is on the death bell for XP. It is rung. Um, Microsoft is actually saying... We're, we're getting conflicting reports from Microsoft as far as the death of XP. Uh, I believe it's um, April uh, 2014 is supposedly the technical date or death for XP. But um, does, does it mention when Vista is going out of full support? No, Vista Vista is still gonna is still in the mix. It's right now just concentrating on XP. Well, because I swear I read somewhere that uh, Vista is going to go out of technical support before XP does. Oh, I can't see that. Well, nobody liked Vista. I mean, they had well, that such... doesn't matter. There's still many too many Vista machines out there that they would do if they're still going to support XP for the next three years, four years. You can't tell me they're going to turn off Vista before that. I could see him doing it. No, no, no. I, I don't. I don't think Microsoft is that big of a bully that they're saying, "Hey, you had a Vista machine. We're not going to support you anymore." I don't believe that. But with the XP, I do. And uh, although uh, one of the things, according to the Gardner Group, uh, is that they're believing that 2012 is going to be uh, the last year for any security updates, uh, anything that uh, really actually has to do with XP. Um, as far as security goes and updates, uh, they're saying that next year, 2012, this being 2011, uh, is it. And after that, you're kind of hanging there on your own. And then after April 2014, that's it. There will be nothing more that Microsoft will have to do with XP. Well, unless you want to pay them to do it. You know, I've heard stories um, that they'll, you know, if you pay them a certain amount, they'll actually do stuff for you, but they won't actively do it. Why, why, why would you want to, I mean... If you're, I don't know, if, you, if you're a business or something, I could see for some reason if, you know, you have a huge amount of infrastructure, I could see it, but, you know, I just just buy a huge site license and update your computers. Well, I, I think what happens is you have specialty equipment out there running uh, operating systems. Um, it, it could be a big industrial piece of equipment that runs off XP that could still run off XP for another 15 years without a problem. I think those are the guys that are going to run into the problem right now because things are specific to that uh, operating system to operate that piece of equipment. Uh, the piece of equipment is still good. It's just that the OS is going to be dated. What happens there, I don't know. Uh, well, because I'm, there's still DOS machines out there. Well, I, I think for situations like that, I mean, if it's not actually connected to the Internet, then I'm, you're not going to have a problem. If it's a completely closed system, then what's the point of even worrying about that? Well, yeah, the, the only problem would be is there will be absolutely no support. I mean, if something glitches on the, on the OS and you know you have a glitch, there, you, you know, what are you going to do? So this brings up the other point of reloading XP. XP needs to be uh, authorized correct over the internet yeah but authenticated i'm yeah, sorry I mean, that's I, the word I, I, there, and I so what's going to happen you're going to reinstall xp there's no authentication allowed this machine's just a stand alone did, did they do that with the other ones i mean i don't see them not allowing you to authenticate it i bet you could call it and heck they might even give you a master key for it or something i, I don't know i don't know i and i'm sure they wouldn't do that because they do still consider it their intellectual property but i i see a problem occurring with uh, XP coming to end of life and still pieces of equipment uh, operating just fine uh, on it and uh, them having a problem. I mean, I have an example myself. I have one XP machine that runs one particular piece of equipment. It happens to be a vinyl letter, letter cutter that I have and uh, there's no upgrade for it. That's it. This one particular piece of software and that one machine and I plan on, you know, I'm assuming that machine's going to last me for another 20 years without any problem. So, I could be one of those people that are stuck with an operating system that's no longer supported. And if I had a glitch, is there a guarantee or is there not a guarantee that I'm going to be able to authenticate it and keep it running? I mean, there's I still, I mean, if there's no internet, no authentication servers, I mean, there's always ways around activation. Yeah, whether, you, saw, you know, whether, whether it's illegal or not, I think is a different conversation, but there are ways to bypass activation. Well, I think it's a good question, though. I think, uh, I think it's a question Microsoft needs to come out and say, you know, what are we going to do with all the legacy equipment out there? And I'm not just talking about Internet machines or gaming machines like we have or whatever. I'm talking about a piece of equipment that runs some hardware or something that, you know, XP is working just perfect for. But how is that Microsoft's? I mean, I don't really see that being as Microsoft's problem. I mean, Realistically, I mean, 
it should be either the man, the, the person who owns it or the manufacturer of the device. I don't see I don't see that being Microsoft's problem. Why don't why doesn't the manufacturer make some you know new whatever that runs it off the latest and greatest or get some sort of Linux distro or or make some in house software? So I'm not really sure if it's their problem. Dollars. I think you're talking about you know you've got people you've got companies out there that have millions of dollars in this equipment that's running off of this piece of software and and, well, it, and it comes down to dollars and cents. I suppose if you pay enough money to whomever. Uh, they're going to be able to keep it running just fine. It, but it, I don't think it's fair. It, it, it seems. It, it still seems to me that if anything, it's the manufacturer's fault for not actually updating the software, or if it's an out of runs. Uh, if it's an out of run, um, what's the term? An out of run device. Then, you know, I, I, I think you know, I no deposit, no return. I mean, and unfortunately, I, I, it's kind of hard to blame Microsoft for that. I, I don't think it's. For them moving on... Wait, what would could have cost Microsoft to still keep a little bit of support going for XP for the next 10 years? A couple people? I mean, well, they well, have no, so much money, they can't spend enough money. Well, the, the one thing is money. that they, the, this is the last patch, but I'm, I'm, pretty, you know, I'm pretty sure they'll, they'll still have some end-of-life support. You know, I, you know, does it specifically say what it is? I, or, you know, after, like, the 2012, is it no more support? Like, you know, what you see is what you get, or... Well, let me read this section here and let's see if this brings out a little more light onto it so for xp lovers the 2014 deadline might sound comforting but silver said that the end of 2012 is worrisome independent software vendors have stopped testing new versions of applications on xp uh, get off of windows xp by the end of 2012 this move means and ensures business apps will run on most user pcs and if you run late you still have a good window before microsoft cuts off security patches Run past 2014 and you'll need custom support from Microsoft. Uh, the estimate the minimum for customer support will be $200,000 for the first year if you have software assurance. If you don't have software assurance, the price tag is more like a half a million dollars. Yeah, to me, it still seems like it's the person who made the product. You know, it's not Microsoft's problem because these people didn't decide that they decided not to make support their hardware why couldn't they go back support their hardware make a new driver or software set that works with newer versions okay i'll bring out one reason why that probably is going to happen how many companies uh that were in business 10 years ago are in business now well i mean the true they're not there there's but no there's support. also emulation there's, no company there's there. also run application and you know and windows the xp mode i mean how good that is is a different story but i i just have a hard time blaming microsoft for wanting to you know get on with it you know, I don't know that I blame them, but I, I just I worry about all those people that are out there running equipment and machines that XP is working just fine for, and then there'll be no longer any kind of support whatsoever for it. I just, as a businessman, I see lots of dollars being put out. As I just read, you know, we are talking about lots of dollars if you go beyond it, and I don't think you can put that on uh, manufacturers, especially manufacturers that are no longer around or moved to China. So, I so think we you, have a tough time with that. So you, you end up blaming Microsoft, who wants to, you know, basically tell everybody, hey, it's time for the next version, let's go. Instead, you want them, you want them to support the next version for Infinity? Because, you know, we both know people who would never change the next operating system. They're comfortable and happy. Should Microsoft be forced to support an antiquated piece of software for the next, you know... 50 years? Good question. I, I mean, we're I still running it. Cobalt, so I mean, I, have, I just have an issue with that, but I understand. I mean, worst comes to worst, they should at least keep, you know, one to th you know, an authentication server or whatnot, or you call them up and it, you know, and then do it that way. Well, maybe they'll work out something after 2014 that'll, that'll work with some of the people, because I, I, there's just going to be an awful lot of equipment out there still running on XP that works just fine. Uh, they don't use it as a as a home PC. It's running a piece of equipment, and it would be nice if Microsoft just stood up and said, "Hey, you know what? We'll help support you down the road for the next you know decade, whatever it may be, and it won't cost you a half a million dollars." And that'd be nice. I mean, uh, they have plenty of money. Uh, I'm not worried about Microsoft, and you know, the little bit of being the nice corporate uh, individuals that Microsoft claims that they are, uh, it would be nice to see them to do something like that. Just my bet. I think I, I think it'll be interesting. Go on. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, yeah, me too. Do you have anything else? Not really. I mean, those are the two stories I picked out. I mean, the only thing I wanted to say is I was wondering. <coughs> excuse me. I, I really wonder how what antivirus or anti malware the government is using. I mean, so it definitely means they're using Windows 
You know, because I thought I heard somewhere that m- the military uses a special locked down version of Windows. You know, so for me, I'm wondering, are they running Norton? No, you know, so do I have to worry about, you know, the 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 giant system suck Norton I, is these days? When I was at um, working for a company that worked at the Pentagon, the the major supplier of antivirus software for the Army, uh, and you got to remember, each branch has the right to choose it. For the Army, was Trend Micro. They they provided all the antivirus anti malware software for all of the army applications, so I believe that DoD, Navy, and all the others uh, have their own solutions as well. Uh, I don't know if it's all Trend Micro or not, but I know they're in there big time. Well, at least it's not running Norton, so I don't have to worry about you know my my nation's security going down to the biggest well, bloatware out there. Now. What's happening as far as Symantec goes is Symantec's really getting into into the appliance end. Uh, of providing security firewalls antivirus anti-malware through an appliance you know i can tell by the amount you know you have it installed in the system i can tell just by you know how long it takes to boot and it's all well yeah we're we're talking about we're literally talking about a piece of equipment like your router that sits sits in between and it sits there and and you don't even need your desktop antivirus anymore because it's being handled by an appliance yeah but you know for for normal people who you know don't want you know well that's not normal people that's enterprise well i know but they they still i you know i they still have and you know consumer-based products and i would still bet that a lot of their stuff is still consumer that i I still bet they get a lot of more money from consumer base than they do from I don't know. I'm not. I'm not willing to say that. I, I, I don't, I don't I mean, know. That's, that's if you a look guess. at, the, you know, uh, I think uh, corporations, bigger, bigger companies, um, they're into this. Uh, I, I mean, uh, the, the company I used uh, used an appliance that was uh, supported by uh, Trend Micro in that particular time. And what happens is, these uh, these appliances that are used for uh, anti uh, spyware, spam, whatever it may be, you know, interacts between uh, the router, the firewall, and all that. So inter- is it a, so is it a separate thing that plugs in between the inside out the the in the outside access and the internal access, Correct. like between the router and yes. whatever. Yes, yes. See, I would love something like that as a consumer base. That what? Ow, that was cheap. Just because I hate, I'd love to have an extra, you know, an extra wall between you know the outside internet. You and can buy the them. They're just expensive. That's what? The problem. Th- that's cheap. Er. Well, as an example... Um, that hurt, by the way. Ow. You're not supposed to say that on TV. I didn't kick him. I didn't kick him. He bumped his knee on the table. No, see, he kicked me. Mouth. You just didn't see it under the table. I, um, uh, the switch that we're actually running uh, in our network here, where we have two bonded T's, um, it's it's a great switch. It's a little older, and it, and it came with um, software for an appliance part for antivirus in it. The problem was is the software that was designed to be built with that switch no longer exists. I'm not so surprised. didn't do us any good. Um, but with that said, it's, it's, it's there for the enterprise, uh, even small business and enterprise as well as military. But why can't they just have a, you know, a standalone box that sits between... Sits between the you know DSL the, between the modem and the router. That's just you know it's like you know little box like yay high that basically it's you know like a like a firewall slash. It. I mean yeah, they but that's you know like three three hundred bucks or two hundred. Oh, well, that that they don't have. It's in the thousands. Well yeah, see I, I want you know two or three hundred dollars and that, and an annual uh, licensing fee for the for the updates. Yeah, see that's yeah yeah. So it's it's certainly a big way for them to make money. It it it's not priced at the consumers. There's there's no way. Uh, and it is not priced at the small business level. Uh, we couldn't afford it here uh, either. But it's, I'll tell you what, having worked with them, uh, it's a great device. I, I really like them. And maybe someday uh, it, would, it will come down to consumer base or, or small business base. But right now that's not the case. Because uh, if you look at our economy right now, I'm not sure how many uh, companies or businesses would spend that money. Uh, although, you know, there's an argument to be made to uh, installing a device that it does all that your desktop antivirus would do where it would be intercepted before it ever got to all your desktops and uh offset that that licensing fee for that versus the licensing fee you have to pay on every desktop so i think there's some well, i mean a lot of these people that. use i mean for one i'm pretty sure the last place i worked at used um the corporate version of norton norton antivirus i mean personally I, i'm you know if you're going to do that i think you should have like a firewall based you know between actual hardware solution 
and software based on the computer. Yeah, but it, it was a I software. Mean, it was a software based solution that you were talking about. Well, yeah, the Norton, the Norton, Norton it's, it's, corporate it's, edition was out yeah. for yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think that's the only way you could do it. Is you know, I I think it's the better way is having two different ways because. Because one, I mean, if you just have a hardware solution, you know, I think there are ways that that would backfire on you. I think also having software based on your PC is is also a good way because you're tracking traffic from the computer out to the world, not only from out to in. But that's just my opinion. Yeah, I, my my problem is I'm thinking of the dollars and cents. I think if you could save money in one area and put it into a, another area, I think I think. I can understand going to an appliance doing the interception, but if you're paying for that licensing and you're doing that, and then you're also paying for uh, licensing of antivirus on each desktop machine, you've doubled your expense. Have you really doubled your security? I, I don't know that I can, I could say that it, that's, that would be the case. So I, I, I don't know if both solutions will actually work with each other or not. So, so do you, let's move on. One last thing for me. Unless you got something else about it, no. No. Uh, did you do your Windows Nine update recently? You have your, uh, you have your Windows I'm, Seven op updating automatically. I'm pretty sure it did it. Why? What did this uh, one do? Well, Microsoft delivers IE nine point zero point three uh, as the uh, last update on October twelfth. Um, they're saying that there's a pretty big security hole in the earlier versions. And uh, there's a lot of vulnerabilities between IE 6, 7, 8, and 9, according to Microsoft. So make sure that you out there, if you have not uh, uh, updated your uh, Internet Explorer 9, make sure that you go out and do that now. Apparently, there's a pretty good size vulnerability in that. And so you need to uh, make sure that you're, you're updated with that. It's like uh, anything else that you want to do. Uh, I always recommend that if there's updates for your operating system, get that, get those updates. There's reason they're there, and most of them is a source of security patches. So, uh, you know, what, what can I say? So, anyway, thank you for listening to us. Uh, it's another show in the can. My name's Rob Charney. I'm, I'm here, with, I'm I'm here John. with Jonathan, and that's Jonathan Charney over there. Thank you. It's our little round table. We appreciate you coming. We'll try to keep this up, and please give us some feedback. We'd like to know what you think. Thanks a lot.